Hey guys, welcome to LA Love Creative, and today we're talking about the Canon R5C. My first impressions on this camera. Let's get it. Now on this channel, I've done reviews of the Canon R5. I've shot multiple projects on that camera. I love that camera. It has, I have a love-hate relationship for that camera. Love the images that it produces. Love the, um, the autofocus, love the codex. Love all the 8K resolution you get out of that camera. Don't like the overheating, and that made it kind of an issue for me. One of the reasons why I wouldn't use it on particular projects. But with the Canon R5C, they have fixed the overheating issue and I was really excited. So I recently had a photo slash video shoot. I was shooting some models for an agency that I work with and I thought this would be a great time to try the Canon R5C in both capacities as a video camera and as a photography camera and see my thoughts on it. Now, one of the coolest things I love about the R5C is it has a built-in fan. That alone gives me a lot of confidence. A lot of the higher end cinema cameras that Canon has have built in fans. It's the reason why they can last like the Canon C70. They can keep shooting pretty much indefinitely um, without having to worry about overheating. And the Canon R5C has this awesome fan. You hear it when you're, sh when you're about to shoot, but once you push record, it gets really silent. And I'm a big fan of that because it just gives me peace of mind if I ever use the Canon R5C for future projects, shooting a wedding, shooting anything where I know I don't wanna worry about overheating, I know the fan will kick in and it'll save my ass. The Canon R5C pretty much is the same image uh, of the Canon R5. The Canon R5 has an amazing image. It has pretty good dynamic range, the color, the contrast, the sharpness. For most projects, you're gonna probably use the 4K, and what's great is that 4K sense, that 4K image is being downscaled from 8K to 4K. So you're getting a lot of detail, you're getting a lot of more, a more crispier, sharper image. And I, I love the fact that the images look so good out of this camera. Now on the R5C, you have a menu system for photography and one for videography. Now what's cool about that is you're gonna have a photography menu that's similar to your Canon R5 or your Canon R6, which is awesome. And you'll be able to toggle, you know, all of the things and see all the things on that menu that are familiar to you when you're using Canon, you know, mirrorless cameras. Cool thing about that menu system is when you switch to the video portion, which is the cinema portion of this camera, you are getting kind of the same experience that you'd get for the you know canon c70 which i'm shooting on right now which is awesome so if you're used to the canon c70 or the cinema line of uh canon cameras then you'll be able to switch to the video system and you know scroll through the menus in that similar way that you're used to the only downside of these two different separate menus is the boot time which if you're in a pinch and you're trying to go from one one to another it's going to be a little slower but if it's not a big deal to me i think if i'm shooting photos and i need to get the video real quick i can wait a couple seconds when i was shooting with the canon r5c it is a little bit more bulky than a regular canon r5 but it's light it's relatively light it doesn't feel plasticky or like you know like fragile but it is definitely a lighter camera than it looks and it's a little chunkier than an r5 but i'm used to using my R5 and my R6 on a with a battery pack and I'm used to this being kind of a chunkier camera so I didn't that didn't really bother me um, it is however more geared towards filmmaking so if you're gonna get this camera for photography just save a little bit money and get the R5 but if you want the functionality of both then I definitely would suggest the R5C as a photography camera and a videography camera if you can get over the fact that it's a little, little bit chunkier. One of the things that a lot of people didn't like about the Canon R5C is that it kind of scaled down its stabilization. So there's no in-body image stabilization, only digital stabilization, similar to the C70. That is a bummer, um, I will be honest. That is one thing that if you're looking for the Canon R5 versus the Canon R5C, you might consider the Canon R5 if you're wanting more of a smoother handheld look. My Canon C70, I like the digital in, you know, digital stabilization. I think it's good for most cases. Great when I'm just trying to shoot something and I'm just trying to get rid of the micro jitters. But if you really want a smooth, smooth image um, out of your stabilization, then you're gonna wanna go with the R5. 
if you can get over the overheating and stuff like that. Another thing that a lot of people do not like about the Canon R5C is they kind of scaled back the autofocus and they didn't do it in the photography, but they kind of did it in the video, which is weird because that means that they have the technology photography wise, just not video wise. I think one of the reasons why they did this was because if we had gave the R5C just all the best functions ever, then I think the Canon C70 or cameras like that might not be as appealing. Um, that's just my opinion, but who knows, maybe they'll unlock this autofocus in the future. But basically when you're shooting with the Canon R5C, in photography, you have the eye tracking, you have like the face tracking. It's super snappy. It's like literally some of the best autofocus you're gonna work with. And then when you switch to video, it's more similar to the Canon C70s. It's face tracking, it has face priority, which is awesome. Um, but it's still a little bit lacking in terms of competing with its photo side when it comes to autofocus. Some of the things that you might consider when you're looking at the Canon R5C versus like a Canon C70, the Canon R5C still is a photography camera that is modified, you know, for video. It has a fan, you know, it has the video functions, like I said earlier, with the, you know, with the menus and stuff, but just know that it is still a hybrid camera. So functionality wise, it might not be as comfortable to shoot with as the Canon C70. The audio inputs are not the best. Um, you're gonna want to figure out a way to get XLRs. They do have, you know, adapters that you can put on top of the hot shoe that I think Tascam comes out with um, where you can get XLR inputs, but you gotta, that's additional cost. So keep that in mind. Um, you're gonna have to figure out a ND solution, whether that be, you know, adapting EF glass where you are putting a, EF to, you know, RF adapter and you're just using EF glass only and you can have an ND, ND filter like adapter like that. So just know that the Canon C70 has built in ND filters, the Canon R5C does not. The Canon 5C has terrible battery life. That is one thing that I learned using this camera. Even if you're shooting just regular like, you know, the uh, HQ 4K, it really drains the battery really quickly. Um, if you want to shoot 8K resolution or something like that, you're going to need a really beefy battery uh, system for that, whether it be V-mount or uh, some type of USB-C battery, which is cool because the R5C can be charged with USB-C. Canon C70, on the other hand, you can use two BP like 60 batteries and literally shoot like all day and never have to really worry about it. But you can make the R5C work and image quality wise, I could see why people would really want to make the R5C work because you're getting AK resolution and it's amazing and you're getting 45 megapixel stills. So one of the cool benefits of the R5C is it's a hybrid camera. You can shoot photos and videos when you're shooting with the C70. When I shoot weddings, sometimes people will be like, take a picture of me. And I'm like, oh, you're going to have to talk to our photographer because it doesn't shoot pictures. So that's not a big deal. But when you're shooting, you know, it's really cool to have one camera that does it all versus having to have two separate bodies. I personally like a camera that does really, really good video and a camera like the R6 that does really good photography. I don't mind them being two different bodies, but if you want to save a little bit of money in a lot of ways as well, um, by having one camera that does both, then you can definitely do that. Should you buy a Canon R5C versus a C70? That is a question for you to figure out. I hate to answer like that. I personally, um, if you can buy both because I'm, I need to chill because my credit card is always hurting, but most likely I'll probably buy one eventually <laughs> and have another Canon camera. But at the moment, I know that it's not a priority for me personally. I have the Canon C70. It's a beautiful video camera. I have the R6 for photography, for uh, videography. I have a EOS R, I have a Canon RP, I have a Canon C200. If I get an R5C, it would be a great addition to the team. It would be more like a want rather than a need at this moment. My wife's going to kill me if another package comes, but it might be a Canon R5C soon. <laughs> but that's all I have to say about the Canon R5C. If you have any questions about videography or photography, hit me up in the comments below and I will see you next time. Peace.